If you've watched 3D Zelda speedruns before, chances are you've either seen a trick which uses ESS position or simply heard of the term ESS position. ESS, or Extended Super Slide Position, refers to a circular band of potential analog stick positions just outside of a controller's dead zone. Holding the analog stick within this narrow region is useful for speedrunning a surprising number of 3D Zelda titles as well as their associated remakes. In these titles, holding ESS position while standing still and not targeting will result in Link either shuffling or turning slowly without changing position to match the angle being held by the analog stick. If Link is targeting and then ESS position is held, he will begin to move very slowly in the direction of the ESS position. This is simply due to the way these games respond to the analog stick. As the analog stick gets further away from the center of the dead zone, Link will begin to move faster and faster. So if the analog stick is barely outside the dead zone, Link will be moving very slowly or simply turning in place. But why is this weird position on the analog stick and the animation it creates useful for speedrunning Zelda titles? The short answer to that question would be the useful manipulation of Link's speed value. In Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, the shuffling animation caused by ESS position is useful for many things, such as duplicating bottles over other items or setting up complex tricks that require Link to face precise angles. However, arguably the most useful property of this shuffling animation is that any speed Link has going into it will be preserved until the animation is over. This proves to be very useful coming out of tricks or glitches that give Link very high speeds such as super slides. If you begin a super slide, hold the left ESS position with the analog stick, and then stop the super slide by letting go of R, Link will begin the shuffling animation and keep nearly all the speed he had during the super slide. This is useful as Link cannot turn during a super slide, but can turn while in the ESS shuffling animation by untargeting and retargeting. This allows players to extend their super slides past where they would normally be able to go by curving them around corners or avoiding obstacles that may potentially be in their path. ESS position can also be used in other high-speed scenarios, such as coming out of water during a super swim or jump slash recoil, known as a water extended super slide, taking damage from an enemy or bomb, known as a forward extended super slide, or shielding damage, known as a hyper extended super slide. The speeds that are reached with these applications are much faster than most normal movement methods in the N64 games, as well as their 3DS remakes, and save decent amounts of time when traveling around the overworld or going through long rooms in dungeons. These speeds can also be combined with the hover boots in Ocarina of Time to cross gaps that would be too large to cross normally. In The Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, and Skyward Sword, ESS position is useful in a slightly different way for a technique that these games all share known as brake sliding. Put simply, brake sliding consists of holding target and ESS position in the opposite direction of Link's velocity, which gives Link an extremely low rate of speed loss compared to letting the control stick be neutral. This rate of speed loss is so low that it makes Link look as if he's sliding along the ground at the same constant speed. One unique property of brake sliding is that when it's executed, it shifts Link's speed value from positive to negative. While this may seem irrelevant, it's actually very useful. In the three games I previously mentioned, Link's movement speed is determined by the slope of the terrain he's on and whether he's traveling up or down the slope. If Link is moving on flat ground, his speed will not be reduced at all. But traveling up slopes will reduce Link's speed by a somewhat noticeable amount, while moving down slopes will reduce his speed by a rather negligible amount. If we use brake sliding to maneuver up slopes instead of normal running or rolling, Link will achieve speeds that normally only happen while traveling down slopes. While the time saved from this technique wouldn't be immediately noticeable, using it everywhere in a speedrun of these games would likely save minutes over normal movement. However, due to the precision of this application, it will likely only ever be useful in future tool-assisted speedruns for these games. One use of brake sliding which is seen in modern speedruns is that of sliding across quicksand at high speeds in Skyward Sword. The reason we can keep speeds in quicksand with brake sliding is again due to the switch from a positive to negative speed value, as quicksand will only attempt to limit Link's speed if it's above a certain positive value, not below a negative one. This is used in a decent number of places in Skyward Sword speedruns, wherever quicksand is an obstacle, and is what allows runners to completely bypass the Temple of Time area in the Laneru Desert. Another visible use of ESS position can sometimes be seen when performing the Super Swimming glitch in the Wind Waker or the Wind Waker HD. ESS position can be used during a Super Swim in essentially the same way that brake sliding can serve speed on land. 
Holding the ESS position in the opposite direction of Link's velocity will result in a speed decrease which is much lower than simply letting the control stick be neutral. This can be critical to saving super swims if they do not have enough speed to make it to their destination normally, as drowning and then respawning will cost runners a major amount of time. Despite all the uses we've covered so far, arguably the most useful application of the ESS position comes exclusively in the Wind Waker HD. In this bloomed up remake, ESS position can be used to perform a glitch known as item sliding. Item sliding is performed by first pulling out an item that you can move around with while aiming in the first person mode, such as the grapple hook, moving forward, pausing, and then holding ESS down. This will make Link begin to slide forward. Unlike the rest of the ESS applications we've covered which only conserve speed, item sliding will actually increase Link's speed exponentially at a rate of 20% every single frame. This allows Link to build up an absurd amount of speed so quickly that the game will crash if you attempt to charge up an item slide for longer than 8 seconds. Due to the crazy amounts of speed that can be achieved, it's possible to easily cross large gaps, phase through actors as if they were nothing, slide into water and swim to other islands within seconds, and even perform the legendary barrier skip sequence break which cuts more than 2 hours off of the game's any percent speedrun. So yeah, I'd say it's pretty useful. Anyway, I hope you guys found this video interesting, and I will see you all next time where, who knows, maybe we'll have even more tricks that involve ESS position.